guys, how's it going? Tom here, um, and I'm bringing you a quick install video on something that if you own a 1500s that have coil springs, something that'll definitely benefit you. If you tow a camper, boat trailer, or even just putting a large amount of weight in the bed, like picking up a bunch of bags of concrete or something, this is definitely for you. What we're gonna be installing is an air ride air spring bag that basically goes right inside your, and the reason why this is a common problem with the Ram 1500s is because they use coil springs, which gives you a really nice ride, but when it comes to towing, it'll just squat way easier than a truck with leaf springs would. So we're gonna throw these in, this is how they come. This is the HD version, so there's two different versions. And so this is, I believe, a 2100, and the other ones are 1000. So if anyone knows anything about airbags, they know that people have had issues with them deflating or the compressors going. Well, that's where this really is nice because they're they're cheap. Like this is 120 bucks. So they pop, you, you buy a new set. Like unless it pops in a week, then probably don't go back to this brand, but we'll see how they do. Insulation wise, they're pretty simple. Does not require a lot of tools. Go underneath, I'm probably gonna go right under the tow hitch, jack it up as high as I can, put jack stands under it so it's safe so that you have that, that coil spring completely spread out. You're gonna have to take your tires off. And basically we're just gonna take that bag, you shove it inside the spring, you hook up the hoses, run the hoses to a spot where you wanna be able to access them. It has the same port as a bike tire. You could hook it up to a, a tire inflator, an air compressor. This bag um, basically holds between a five and then it can go up to 50. First step, chalk your front tire. All right, we got this thing jacked up. I got two jack stands underneath it with wood blocks going up to the frame. And then also my jack underneath the tow hitch, just in case, got all three. Honestly overkill, but you can never be too safe. So now that we got this up, the tires are barely off the ground. So the suspension is completely sagged, which it has to be to install the bags. Um, we're gonna pull the tires off. All right guys, now let's get to the unboxing of this product. Always love a good sticker so now going over what this thing includes obviously you have these are the air springs themselves they have this is the nozzle right here for the air to go into these pucks they go on top of these actually like this to protect this nozzle then you have your air hose here's all your hardware it comes with some zip ties for probably putting this up different nozzles this is your t so to hook the two airbags together you're going to use the t with the hose so Hose comes from each bag, goes into the T on each side, then this would go out to wherever you're gonna have access to filling it. And you have your manual, how to use it. So I'm pretty impressed, these are really good directions. They basically show everything. For example, here's all that hardware. So this is where you're gonna have your port where you'd fill up the air spring. So I got all the hardware out, and basically you have your hose come into here. There's a clamp that clamps it onto the nipple of this valve. And then you have one of these, this, then whatever you're going through that would be here, then you have a rubber washer, a metal washer, another nut, and then obviously your valve stem cap. This is the T, so basically the two hoses come from the bags in here, get clamped to those nipples, and then the single one that comes off will go to the hose that then comes over to here. Also, you have twice the hardware just in case you wanted to have each bag controllable individually for, say, if you have an uneven load. According to the directions, it wants you to take the spring out and then install this which I don't think is very necessary because what you can do is you can fold this thing up like a hot dog and then zip tie it tight and then feed it in between two of the springs. So as far as the hardware goes on top of the air spring and you have this stem, this screws on just like that, screw it on tight and then your hose will go over this nipple and then you'll have another, another hose clamp to hold it on. Remember this isolator will go right here. This protects this bottom part. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this thing compressed down and we're gonna get it zip tied like a nice hot dog. To get this compressed down, you're gonna wanna squish all the air out of it. Take this valve off. I'm gonna use a cap, put this valve stem cap back on. See how this does. So we got our nipple back on and we're ready to put it in. Now we're gonna stick it in, have your dikes handy because we're gonna cut the zip ties with them after. Looks like this is probably the biggest gap here. Shove that in there, twist it up and in. 
almost there. There we go. So it's in, let it drop down. Don't cut the bag when you snip the zip ties and it should fill back up to its uh, normal shape. And now the thing is with this suspension dropped, you can easily get to this nipple up on top. Giving you a look under here, you can see this is the top of the bag. And then up there, this is hollow. So you can actually reach your hand up on the outside of this and then come and poke your fingers down. So basically that hose is gonna go right down the center through that. And then you're gonna hook it in there and then put your hose clamp on it. So the hose is fed down to the, the middle on the top. Got my extra hose just comes over the top and is hanging right here. So we're gonna take this, shoved onto the nipple, make sure all of the, the rubber is over the barbs. There you go, and that's ready to be screwed back on the bag. An important step not to miss is putting in this puck over top, oh my lord. So now that we got this done, all that's left to do is to run your tubing back to where you wanna have the T connection. They show it's best to run it down the frame rails, especially to keep it away from your exhaust pipes. Also, when you were zip tying, do remember, don't cinch these down super tight. Leave it pretty loose so that you're not kinking this air hose. All right, guys, so we got both of our hoses here run from each side. We'll cut them, throw in the T here, and then take a piece of the, the scrap tubing and run that to our single valve stem. You have your T, you're gonna connect each end. Make sure you get all of those barbs on that nice nipple into the hose. Then you're gonna take your, put it on the bottom of the T. So now you're ready to put your valve stem in. Now for matting location, I'm actually thinking of putting a little hole in the plastic right here and have it right here in the corner by the license plate. Got our hole. So on the back side of this, you're gonna want to thread a nut on and then this little locking star thing. Find your hole, rubber washer, metal washer, nut. There you go, there's your port. Get in there. Use your teeth. And then your little valve cap can go there and hides everything. Nice and pretty. So now also looking at this little manual they got that comes with it, this is separate from the instruction manual. You can basically kind of work with the PSIs and figure out what is the best for your different types of trailers. So camper, boat, utility, work trailers. I have a utility trailer and a boat trailer that I'll be really using. So I'm gonna kind of get those dialed in to figure out what's the best PSI for those. All right guys, so I'm back. It's been probably, probably three, maybe almost over four months since I started making this video and did the install portion of the video. I've been driving this thing all summer on these bags. I put 10 PSI in them. I took a reading probably about a month after using them. So gave them a little chance to break in. Um, and it went to about seven. I left it. I didn't add any more after that. I mean, I've been towing the bass boat, utility trailer with my ATV, load this thing up with tools, material. It rides a lot better. It doesn't squat as much, if at all, depending on the load. It, it's been great. Let's take a look. I got my pressure gauge here and see what this thing's read. So we're sitting at six PSI, and that's been probably two and a half to three months since I recorded it at seven. So we've lost one PSI in three months, and also now we're starting to get into colder temperatures. Now it is a lot cooler, um, so air contracts a little bit. Only losing one PSI is, I think, pretty, pretty good. These things are definitely holding air, even when being used. All right, so now to give you guys a little bit of a load test, uh, I got this trailer right here. So we're gonna put the skid steer on the trailer. I am gonna jack it up to about 45 PSI. The bag says don't go over 50. So we're gonna just give it a little bit of a safe buffer with 45. I have put this skid steer on this trailer and on my truck before in the past, the tow hitch was touching the ground, meaning I wasn't able to tow it and I had to go get a 2500. So we'll see how these bags help, see if they can get this thing to the point where it can tow this. Let's uh, pump her up. I do wish I had a baseline video to show you basically how much it squatted without the bags on it. It'd be pretty easy to just tell that this was touching this. So if that doesn't happen, it's an improvement. Thank you. 
movement. That hook was touching the ground last time. It's probably, uh, I don't know, eight to nine inches. It's not sagging. That's definitely drivable. I wouldn't do it every day, but for this instance, it's not a big deal. Guys, let me tell you, I am really impressed with these bags right now. Truly, they definitely paid off 120 bucks or whatever they were. 100% worth it. Guys, thanks for watching this video. Stay tuned for more like this. And also, if you're looking to buy any type of welding equipment, check out Yes Welder. And also, if you're looking to do a move bumper fabrication, they have bolted options. Um, go check them out. Both sites use my uh, discount code at checkout. It's GMP in all caps and you'll get 50 bucks off your next bumper order and 10% off your next order at Yes Welder. Thanks for watching.